three. Oh, no, nope, never mind. It's all you, Mattia. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you guys so much uh, for joining us for our, our uh, monthly commission meeting. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and call this meeting to order to get today. The Metro Council, uh, um, the Metro Arts Commission, and Metro Arts staff are joining by conference call. Uh, in a moment, we will call roll of all present members. Uh, this meeting will be recorded and posted within 48 hours to Metro Nashville's YouTube channel. All action, all action items voted on today's meeting at today's meeting will be reconfirmed at the next in-person meeting of the committee. Public comments previously submitted will be ready, read by a Metro Arts staff member. Uh, to make an in-person comment during the meeting, I will make an announcement when public comments will open for each agenda item. At that time, the call-in number will be displayed on the screen, and you can call in for assistance in commenting by a Metro Arts staff member. Um, now, I encourage all participants on this call to stay muted uh, and use the raise hand uh, WebEx function if you want to speak. Um, if any commissioners are having technical difficulties, please, uh, with any of these functions, please let me know before we proceed. So I am calling to meet into order. Does anybody have any technical issues that we need to address before we get started? Okay, well, um, we are going to um, have to make the motion. Um, we, we need to have a, an emotion to adopt um, um, that this is essential uh, business and that we need to meet electronically. So um, I am going to, um, Oops, sorry, I skipped over. We got to do the roll call first. My bad. All right, we're going to uh, do our roll call first, and then we'll have the motion. So uh, I am going to take a uh, roll for all of our commissioners. Please uh, mute yourself and, and uh, announce if you are present. Um, Commissioner Jim Schmidt. OK. Um, Commissioner Will Chief. Sorry, y'all. Everybody kind of sounds like Mickey Mouse. What's going on? <laughs> it's, it's pretty weird. Oh, let me try another one. Uh, Commissioner Jane Alvis. Okay, I heard you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Commissioner Marianne Bird. Marianne Bird present. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Daniel. Commissioner Dow. Commissioner Haynes. Okay. Commissioner Nichols Busey. Yes, I'm here present. Thank you. Commissioner uh, Commissioner Ramos. Here. Thank you. Commissioner Roberts. Here. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Stringer. Okay. Commissioner West. Here. Thank you. And Commissioner Whitney. Thank you. Um, did I miss anyone? Okay. Thank you guys so much. Um, so we're, the next thing we do need to do is entertain a motion so that we can conduct this meeting um, electronically. Um, so I am calling, I'm gonna call for a motion that the meeting uh, constitutes essential business of this body and meeting electronically is necessary to protect the health, safety, and welfare of Tennesseans considering the COVID-19 outbreak and is permitted under the governor's executive order number 65. Um, do I have someone uh, that can propose this motion? This is um, Jane Alvis. Him. This is Jane Alvis, I move. Thank you, is there a second? This is Paula, second. Thank you very much. Okay, so we're going to have to go ahead and take uh, the vote. Um, the vote uh, by um, roll call. Okay.
Um, Matia, before we do that, um, Kevin, would you mind um, unmuting Jim, who's calling in? Um, as well as Bonnie Dow. Hi. Oh, I'm here. Wonderful. Thank you, Bonnie. Um, thank you, Bonnie. Um, all right, so I'm going to go ahead and, and um, take the vote on the motion um, so that we can electronically. Um, Commissioner Schmidt. Aye. Thank you. Commissioner Cheek. Sorry, maybe Will's not here. I will keep going. Um, uh, Commissioner Dow. Yes. Commissioner West. Aye. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Alvis. Aye. Jane, I didn't hear you. Aye. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Whitney. Thank you. Commissioner Bird. Commissioner Bird, aye. Thank you. Commissioner Ramos. Aye. Thank you. Commissioner Roberts. Aye. Thank you, Commissioner, Commissioner Busey. Aye. Um, Commissioner Chief, can I, I missed you on the first call. I didn't hear your vote. Could you um could you vote? Could you um vote? <laughs> well, you sound like Mickey I heard Mouse. something. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, I think I, I think that was a yes, but if you might want to pop that in uh, the chat, I can't quite understand it. It is it does it does sound like Mickey Mouse. Um, not sure what's happening there. We might need to get some technical assistance for Commissioner Cheek um, uh, to make sure that uh, he has uh, he's connected correctly or there's not any issues. Did I call everybody that's present? Okay, I think the motion passes. Okay. Um, thank you guys. I appreciate you guys bearing with me uh, as my as my first uh, meeting conducting this uh, in Commissioner Schmidt's, uh, Schmidt's uh, stead. We're going to, um, I'm going to go ahead and pass this over to Emily and she's going to have a presentation on arts in action. Emily, you're muted. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry about that. Do I sound okay? as much like Mickey Mouse as normal. Okay, so good to see you all. Happy almost holidays. Um, for our first highlight this month, advance the slide, uh, we have a few media hits. Uh, WPLN did a story on uh, Monday's opening of Cossie Gardner Senior Park on Jefferson Street. Uh, they interviewed Caroline. This story focuses on the public art at the park, which we'll hear a little bit more about uh, later in the meeting. Next slide, please. WPLN also uh, covered the remaining CARES Act funds that Metro has left to distribute and specifically referenced the $2 million in grants for arts and culture nonprofits, which we'll hopefully also talk about later in the meeting. One more media mention, um, NBC News Online, the national one did a story about Nashville's political climate in the context of the larger Tennessee political climate. They featured 
an aerial photograph of the Thrive approved project uh, Black Lives Matter mural on Woodland Street and interviewed uh, project organizer and activist Grace Gadsden. Finally, we have some viral voter sticker information. Um, some of you may have seen that actor director Bryce Dallas Howard somehow got wind of our sticker contest and put it on her social media platforms. She specifically tagged Metro Arts and you know gave all the information about the contest and Milka Nagasi from Hugh Fox. So we were very excited about that. She has about four and a half million followers across all of her social media platforms. And so her posts about the sticker got about 12,000 likes across platforms. Um, in addition to celebrities, we had uh, Nashville citizens uh, sharing dozens of selfies throughout early voting and on election day. And you can see there in the bottom of your screen, a quick slideshow of selfies from November 3rd, election day. Um, we had a lot of requests from citizens who went to their polling location only to find out the sticker had already been, uh, was quote, sold out. Um, and we also <laughs> have from the Tennessee State Library and Archives for the sticker and the contest information to include with their women's suffrage archive. If any of you didn't get a sticker and you wanted one, please let us know. We'll send one to you. We had hoped to give them out in person at a board meeting, but that didn't happen. So we're happy to send you stickers if you like. I know Jim got one. So thank you all. That's. Thank you so much, uh, Emily. Appreciate you. Okay, we're going to move on to the next order of business. Um, uh, we have an action item uh, that is uh, that's um, up for uh, um, our next item of agenda, and so I think that uh, I need to go ahead and open up a uh, public comment. So public comment is now open. Um, our action, our next action item is the artworks phase two uh, lending libraries artwork selection recommendations. Uh, we will now move on the action item one. Public comment is now open on this agenda item pertaining to the artworks phase two Linden Libraries artwork selection. Uh, if you would like to call in, you can do so now at 629-255-1921. Uh, the number will remain displayed on the PowerPoint for the duration of the presentation. And so now I'm going to pass it over to Anne. Thank you. Um, good afternoon. Today, I'm very pleased to share with you artwork recommendations from the selection panel and the public art committee for Artworks Phase 2, our art lending library that we've been talking about and working on this past year. Um, Grace, if you want to go to the next slide, please, or next slide. One of our action items um, today is the recommendation for approval to purchase 60 of the select, 60 selected artworks. But before we do that, we wanted to give you a quick overview of the project, our goal for supporting artists, and the initial evaluation we have done to consider diversity of artists represented in the collection and the economic impact to artists. As you may recall, um, Artworks Collection is part of the larger Metro Public Art Collection funded with percent funds. What sets it apart is that it is smaller scale artworks. To this point, they've all been wall hung. They are by local Nashville Davidson County artists, and these artworks are placed in Metro Public buildings for all to enjoy. A recommendation for such a collection was included in the Public Art Community Investment Plan from 2017. Phase 1, which we called 40 for 40, celebrated Metro Art's 40th anniversary with the purchase of artworks from 40 artists for two Metro buildings, the historic courthouse and the Metro office building. Based on the positive response, we have always intended to expand the artworks collection, but hadn't yet determined what shape that would take. Would it be the same model taken to different metro buildings, or would it be something entirely different? One of the ideas we have been considering was that of an art lending library. Nonprofits, public libraries, and art museums have been doing this in various ways for years. As 2020 unfolded, we immediately began to see how artists were being impacted by work and exhibit closures and other devastating losses due to the tornado and the pandemic. 
we began having serious conversations with the Nashville Public Library about how we might establish an art lending library where art purchased from local artists could be checked out by anyone with a library card. Well, they responded enthusiastically, and we determined that two regional branches, Southeast and Madison, would be the sites of the pilot programs. The approved acquisition budget is $100,000 for phase two of artworks, which will be used at two pilot locations and any future locations. Next slide, please, Grace. This public art purchase is the latest in a series of Metro Arts efforts to channel direct support to artists in the wake of the tornado in the pandemic. Utilizing the expertise of our public art committee, staff had some strategic conversation about how to frame the call and the selection criteria in order to maximize support to local artists. We had a lot of discussion about purchases through galleries. Ultimately, we decided that we could best pro provide relief to artists if the entire purchase amount went to the artist rather than being shared with a gallery. Keep in mind, the expected price range for lending library artwork was $300 to $500 with a maximum of $700. That price range seems to align best with a direct sale with an artist. We also discussed the number of submissions that would be allowed um, per artist. The consensus was that three submissions would be allowed, but only one artwork would be purchased from a selected artist. In this way, we can include more artists in the collection. Another way to include more artists is to pass for the time being on artists already in our collection. Future selection panels can revisit this as the collection grows. We also talked about how to best publicize the call to artist. We had um, a wide distribution with notice going out to all of our visual arts grantee organization. We also sent out targeted emails from staff and the public art committee. Perhaps some of you all shared the call to artist. And of course, notice went out through all of our Metro Arts media channels. Well, we were very pleased with the response. We had 78 artists apply, most of whom submitted three artworks for consideration. Uh, the selection panel made up of four public art committee members and a library representative did an amazing job. They were very thoughtful and intentional about providing support to artists and opportunities for artists to be a part of a public art collection. The selection panel recommended 60 artists and, art, and their artworks, which were approved last week by the public art committee. Staff completed an initial review of these selections based on the information that artists provided and evaluated it in terms of the entire collection. If approved, um, these 60 new artworks would bring our collection total to 178 artworks. That's over 80% of our collection by Nashville Davidson County artists. And if you look at the 60 um, artworks and, and artists um, for, that have been proposed, you'll see that the total artwork um, purchase amount would be $26,017. The average purchase price per artwork would be $433.61. This lands squarely within our expected range of $300 to $500 per artwork. We also looked at artist um, residency and are pleased to see that um, this represents six artists from all across um, the county. The artists reside in 24 of the 35 Metro Council districts. 19 of 29 Davidson County zip codes. Um, we even looked at the tornado hit areas and noted that 12 artists are from um, those areas of North Nashville, Germantown, East Nashville, and Donaldson. Um, our submission form provided an opportunity to give demographic information. This was completely optional. Of those who did complete it, we saw that 28 artists identified as persons of color, 
14 artists identified as coming from a low income household, 12 artists um, identified as people with disabilities, 10 artists identified as seniors, seven artists identified as refugees, immigrants, and six artists identified as LGBTQI. Perhaps what was most exciting was to see so many new names. Comparing the selected artists to our Metro Arts records revealed that 55 of the 60 artists had not previously received Metro Arts funding. This was, um, we looked at public art, Thrive, and restorative arts projects. We also noted that 44 of the 60 artists had never responded to a Metro Arts call to artist or applied for funding. That was particularly gratifying to see those numbers. So now we would like to show you the 60 recommended artworks. And in the interest of time, Grace is going to give us about five seconds per slide. Grace? Thank you. Um, if you approve these artworks um, today, we will immediately notify artists and begin the um, purchase process. Our goal would be to pay all artists in mid-December before the holidays. In the meantime and into the early part of the year, um, staff would be working on artwork photography, working with the library on display planning and fabrication, exhibit labels and signage, travel cases, collections management, um, and the promotion of the collection. The expected art lending library launch would be sometime in late winter 2021. Next slide, please. So the action requested is this, um, the public art committee recommends approval to purchase selection panel recommended artworks from 60 local artists for artworks to the art lending library and give staff the discretion to make artwork substitutions as needed. Um, this would be if a selected artwork was no longer available or if we had um, a funding, a framing challenge um, with the selected artwork. That's back to Thank the chair then. Thank you so much. Um, so uh, we have we have a motion uh, on the floor. Um, and before we head into vote and discussion, are there any public comments on this motion submitted uh, by email? Uh, there are no public comments submitted via email. Okay, great. Are there any public comments via phone? There no public yeah. comment by phone. Okay. Okay, great. Thank you. So this is so that is the end of the public public comment for this agenda item. Um, we will no longer be taking comments regarding the subject. Um, and okay, so now to the commission. So are there any clarifying questions for the commissioners about this motion or presentation? Um, I think Sherry, Sherry has a 
question? Yeah, I do, and I don't. Um, it's, the answer is probably not really important, but um, d uh, would there be extra cost involved in trying to uh, in the in the framing? Do we do we put that in the <clears throat> in the original amount cost for framing and um, wrapping it? <clears throat> excuse me, to get it shipped and, and whatnot to get it out of the library and back in the library safely. Is that all a part of the money that's on the table for this? Uh, action right now that 100,000 is the purchase the purchase price so that is all what's going to go to artists so we have additional funds that would be used for the framing and, and other related cost do you anticipate what that amount would be or I guess there's probably no way to really target it is there a guess it even yeah we, we go ahead Caroline did you have something to say Oh, um, so uh, we have a, a certain is it um, a, you know percentage that we use of our our pro of our um, project um, you know acquisition budget that we use for that. So it is built into every um, project. But yes, we don't yet have an idea of how much that is going to be. But we have done some initial um, review of framing um, with some of the ones that we thought might be a little bit tricky. So um, we felt good once we got those numbers back. I think the framing is going to be quite reasonable. Well, that's awesome. Thank you, Emily. Pre or Scott, sorry, that's Annie. I'm so sorry, dear. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Sherry. A good question. Are there any more questions or comments about this uh, action item? Well, this is Jane. I would approve. Okay. So um, we have a motion um, to approve um, to approve this motion. Is there a second? This is Will yeah, Cheek. I'll second. Okay. I heard Will Cheek the loudest. I'm sure somebody else was, was on that call. So we're going to take Will uh, as the second. Um, so we have a motion and a second. So we're going to um, go through. Uh, to what, let's just make sure there's any further, there's no further comments or discussion, then we will take a roll call vote. Um, so I'm going to call everybody's name. Uh, and if you please um, would um, say how you vote on this motion. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Schmidt. Commissioner Schmidt, is he still available? Is he still with us? Okay, I'll I will skip over and come back if need be. Commissioner Cheek. Yes. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Alvis. Yes. Commissioner Bird. Yes. Thank you, Commissioner Dow. Yes. Commissioner Busey. Yes. Commissioner Ramos? Yes. Commissioner Roberts? Yes. Commissioner West? Yes. Commissioner Whitney? Uh, Commissioner Schmidt? Okay. Um, Commissioner, I also vote yes as well. So the motion carries. Thank you. Okay, we're going to move on to our next action item uh, uh, on the agenda. So we're going to move on to action item number two. Uh, public comment is now open on this agenda item pertaining to the Kasi Gardner um, Senior Park Advisory Council. Uh, if you'd like to call in, you can do so now. Uh, it's 629-255-1921. The number will remain displayed on the PowerPoint for the duration of discussion of this item. So I am going to now pass it over to Trey. Thank you very much. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, hope you all are doing well and can hear me OK. Um, so we're just to kind of revisit this project. This is Kasi Gardner Senior Park. Um, it actually had its grand opening this Monday. Um, it was a virtual grand opening. So. Um, only a few people were in attendance and Caroline gave some great remarks. Um, but we've actually um, kind of helped contribute to this wall that is in the back of the property. Um, the scope for the work is mural, 2D, 3D, or multimedia. 
Um, we hope that this space will be a rotating artwork space, um, a community canvas, as we'd like to call it, um, that would rotate every 18 to 24 months. And for this initial installation, we'll be using $50,000 of um, temporary artwork funds, hopefully, if, if you all approve. Um, so just to kind of give you a few of our goals and and yeah, Grace, if you will hit that. Um, this is the park itself. Um, it's a very small pocket park just on Jefferson Street. Um, if you're familiar, as it turns around, you'll be able to see Fisk University in the background. Um, it's just across from One Drop Inc. Um, if you're familiar with Alicia Bus um, Tattoo Studio, and then also Woodcuts Gallery is right there. Um, it's kind of got a large green space and a, a small play play area and then um, this barrier wall. So um, our hope kind of looking back through the, some of the work we've done specifically in North Nashville in the past few years, um, you know, we thought about build better tables and some of the things that we've learned. And I think we think it's very important that we have a deeper kind of civic and cultural participation specifically in this project um, because of the historical significance. Um, so we're kind of trying to take a different uh, approach on our typical selection process, which I'll kind of get to. Um, one thing I did want to share, which which I thought was a great quote, a project in which an, the artist format becomes a conduit for self or community expression rather than a product being offered to an audience. Um, that is the words of Jyoti Gupta when she wrote her holding the mirror up white paper back in 2016. And uh, I think especially for this neighborhood and this space, um, you know, that is something that I hope that we can accomplish with this project. Um, so next slide, please. Um, so for this panel, we'll have kind of a, a different um, set of responsibilities that are typically our selection panel. I guess the one difference is the project development, which I'll get into. Um, these panelists will serve as voting members on a citizen selection panel. Um, they'll evaluate the call to artist submissions and select semifinalists. Um, they will help conduct the final interviews and then um, hopefully we'll recommend a final artist to the public art committee. Um, we're asking them to participate in three virtual meetings and workshop sessions throughout the process. And then um, because of that pre-project pre development work, um, we'd like to offer them a stipend of $200 um, for their time and expertise. Um, next slide, please. So. Um, typically with our selection panels as staff, we are the ones who actually craft the call to artists doing our own research. Um, and then we actually share it with the public and then we have the panelists come in and review it um, based on our scoring metrics and kind of qualifications. So um, with this, I would like to do a kind of a project development where we actually get input from our panel ahead of releasing the call to artists. So ahead of finalizing that document and um, you know, starting to take artist submissions, we'd actually get um, the words from the community. So the way I hope to accomplish this is, is by, um, you know, doing a virtual meeting. This would be an intro to the project. We would go over what our typical call to artists looks like. Um, and then we would kind of follow that up with having them submit a survey, a call to artist survey that would allow them to um, give their feedback and opinions on, on what the call should entail. And then I'll do a one on one follow up with those panelists afterwards and then kind of compiling all of that that data and information into um, the final call to artist. Um, if you could go to the next slide. So some of the things that um, you know we might ask for input around through this survey are our scoring metrics project goals and vision um, application requirements eligibility and then engagement and programming expectations. Um, I think we want to make sure that specifically for scoring metrics that, you know, the, the community is, is really, um, you know, defining what are those, those goals, what are those um, things that, you know, the right artists will have. And then in terms of weighting the scores that, that can be very impactful on um, who is the final artist. And then, um, you know, just simple questions. What are the goals for this project? You know, what kind of impact will this project have in the community? Um, we also typically ask for a letter of interest, um, but I think it would be good to get some short answer questions, um, you know, that are crafted from the panel um, for the artists to respond to instead. Um, and then, yes, yeah, so I, I think 
you know, everything that I've heard has pretty much indicated that this will be a very, very local, close knit call. Um, the community members that there are a number of artists working in the community. And uh, I think that's something they value. However, we, we do want them to be able to be the ones to say, um, hey, you know, if we want an artist from this community, that's something that um, we can, you know, uh, certainly um, structure the eligibility around that. Um, and then obviously, you know, we want to make sure that um, we have continued programming and, and engagement around this space. And um, I think this is specifically important in, in building partnerships for future installations and, and um, events that, and programming that can happen in this space. Um, and then next slide, please. So a proposed timeline um, with your approval, um, we will begin immediately trying to confirm all the panelists. Um, hopefully to have those development meetings in December, um, call to artists released at the first of the year, or probably more like mid mid January, um, and then hopefully our goal is by April and you know spring we can have a community event if, if the COVID um, situation is is okay and um, yeah. So this is our proposed timeline. Um, obviously they change a little bit, but. Um, I think the one thing that is important, we will need to come back to commission to present a final artist. Um, so that is just something to, to keep in mind. Um, and then next slide, please. So for our proposed panelists, um, I, I will just kind of go from the top. Sean Giles is the assistant director of community engagement at the Frisk Museum. Um, he was very active um, with that recent uh, ex exhibition they had about First time voters specifically um, highlighting some of our some of the artists we've worked with. Megan Kelly is on our care team. Um, Thaxton is, is also listed just below. Um, Alicia, Bell, whose shop is just across the street, has an, had an awesome installation um, over at the first this summer. So I thought Sean would be a great partner um, to kind of come in from that that lens. Um, Tim Nage is the assistant director of Parks Planning Division and will serve as the parks representative, um, Daxton Waters, you guys are all pretty familiar with his work and he actually served on the planning team for this project um, a couple years back. Um, I'd like to have Kasi Gardner III or Keisha Gardner Beard. Um, these are the namesakes of Kasi Gardner, or these are descendants of the park's namesake, Kasi Gardner Sr. Um, he was a, a very prominent businessman and entrepreneur in Nashville, a black entrepreneur as well. and. Um, I definitely think it's important, especially at the beginning, to get them involved. Um, so for these next four slots, um, I had a lot of conversations with Van about, um, you know, something that Thaxton left us with, which was having multi-generational representation, um, you know, in this space. And uh, so we thought it would be a, a kind of cool opportunity to pair, um, you know, someone with more experience representing the universities, Tennessee State and Fisk University. Um, not not to leave out Meharry on purpose, but um, but yeah. So we have Courtney Adair Johnson. I, I had reached out to Jamal Sheets. He's actually unable to um, you know commit to the time, but he gave me a recommendation of Dr. Latanya Rogers, who's actually a English literature professor. But um, she said she's she's very great. Um, we talked about having a gallery intern, and because of the the COVID situation, I. I don't know if a lot of you have been to Fisk University um, galleries, but they have a lot of students who work the gallery and kind of get experience around, um, you know, curatorial practices. So we thought that would be a, a great opportunity. Um, there are not students around the gallery right now, but I've got a couple of recent graduates that Jamal has recommended um, that I think would be great. Um, and then we'd also like to get Rashida Fituga, the president of Gideon's Army, and Angel Adams is a community organizer um, that has been reaching out to me and she's been really proactive and, and just kind of following up. So, um, you know, just kind of looking, she's also a teaching artist and a Fisk University alumni. So I, I think, um, you know, she would be great as well. And then of course we would reach out to jump um, and have a representative from there as well. And I did in, intend to put yes um, as the voting member at, in that last box, my apologies. Um, and so I believe that is the final slide. So our public art committee has recommended approval for this selection process um, and selection panel, and we are 
bringing it to you today and I'm happy to answer any questions. Uh, thank you guys. Thank you all, sorry. Thank you so much, uh, Trey, for this presentation. Um, were there any public comments on this motion submitted by email? Uh, there were not. Um, great. Are there any public comments uh, via phone? There are no phone comments. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, um, so that is the end of the public comment for this agenda item. We will no longer be taking comments regarding this subject. Um, so are there any clarified questions um, for the commissioners about this motion or presentation? I have a couple of questions for Trey. Um, this is Paula. Um, okay, so the amount was $50,000 for 18 to 24 month installation. Is, did I get that right? Trey? Yes. Okay, so yes, that's correct. So that fifty thousand dollars. So we would be expecting in maybe the next twenty four months another fifty thousand dollar project. Um. So that is. I I do not know. Um. I don't. I don't. We haven't really talked about the scope and budget for the next installation. Um. I think it's just because it's tricky because we are using temporary funds. I I think so. We can't really. Commit though, and correct me if I'm wrong, Van. Um, hey, but I don't believe that we can commit to those funds. Sorry, go ahead. So one thing um, that we have been in discussion with Parks about is having some shared ownership of future funding opportunities for this park. So uh, both Tim and Monique said that they were very interested in pursuing kind of a friends of group so that both parks and Metro Arts could monetarily contribute to future installations. I think we also have ideas about how percent funds could be used or used um, kind of in partnership with temporary funding, knowing that temporary funding is uh, a fiscal year question mark for us each year that we ask for um, from the mayor and council. So we are aware that that is not always um, a guarantee in our budget. And once we get some beautiful artwork up on that wall, we are going to hit the pavement running to figure out how we sustain this program. But we do have a few tricks up our sleeves. Okay, thank you for that. And then um, one last, well, this is a suggestion. Trey, you might want to maybe think about including um, the council person um, for the district on your panel or have them recommend somebody. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. I can reach out to Freddie, um, Freddie O'Connell and, and see if he's got any thoughts on that. Thank you, Commissioner Roberts. Are there any other questions from commissioners? You can use the raise your hand function or um, just go ahead and ask your question if you have one. Um, really quickly, I, Kevin, would you mind unmuting um, Hope in the uh, attendees list? Uh, that's Hope Stringer, one of our commissioners. Thank you. Okay, so if we don't have any, if we don't have any other um, clarified questions, um, then uh, I will need a motion. So I'm asking for a commissioner to make a motion on this particular agenda item. This is Mary Elena. I make a motion to. Thank you, Mary Elena. Is there a second? This is Campbell, I second. Thank you, Campbell. So we have a motion and, and a second. Um, before we move forward with the roll call vote, are there any other comments or further discussions on this motion? Um, if I may say, Paula, I, I will um, reach out to Freddie O'Connell and, and at least share this list with him and, and get his thoughts. Um, and I, I guess if he has any, any other recommendations um you know i i guess what we need sorry i don't want to make it too difficult but um i guess is there anything we can say if if freddie o'connell has a recommendation that maybe that could be included in um in the panel 
as well. Um, the reason I mentioned uh, reaching out to him is because the council has been really good to the commission. And I just think that when we do great work within the districts, we should include our council reps. I think uh, if the motion just sort of states that we're approving the panel with uh, discretion for staff to make additions as needed or, or something like that, or we can bring it back next, because you're basically approving the panel and I think if we're making changes to it or adding people, would would you want us to bring that back to you next month or, you know, you're approving today with, you know, staff discretion to make updates? Yeah, so I'm assuming we need to update the motion that, that we've been made and second um, to include some additional language. Um, either we give the staff, um, you know, we give the staff, we make this motion with, with an addition that the staff um, can, you know, have add additions uh, at their discretion or we would need to make a motion that we would need to come back in and, and a following council meeting with the presentation of the final committee. This is, uh, excuse me, this is Commissioner. Oh. Okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Jim. As I say, this is, I'll amend the motion to allow staff discretion after consultation with the council person to an additional uh, person that needed. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Schmidt. Uh, Schmidt, is there an addition? Is there a second on that addendum? It's this is Jane. I'm a second. It's great. It's a it's a great idea. Thank you, Jane. Um, so, are there is there any further discussion on uh, the motion and the amend and the amendment? Okay. So we'll take a roll call vote again. The um, uh, motion that we're voting on is that the Public Arts Committee recommends approval for the selection process and the selection panel. Um, for the Cassie Gardner Senior Park with uh, giving staff um, discretion to add additional members as needed. So uh, let's take a roll call vote. Uh, Commissioner Schmidt. Aye. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Cheek. Aye. Thank you. Commissioner Bird. Aye. Thank you, Commissioner Dow. Aye. Thank you, Commissioner Busey. Aye, aye. Thank you, Commissioner Ramos. Aye. Thank you, Commissioner Roberts. Aye. And you skipped Jane. Uh, thank you. Sorry, Commissioner Alvis. Aye. Thanks, Paul. Um, <laughs> Uh, Commissioner Stringer? Aye. Thank you. Commissioner West? Aye. Thank you. Commissioner Whitney? Aye. Awesome. Um, and also vote aye. And so that motion carries. Thank you all. Appreciate it. All right. Thank you very much. Good luck, Trey. Have fun. <laughs> So um, we're going to move over to our next action, um, action item, which is CARES funding. Um, and so we will move, move now to the action item number three. Public comment is now open on this agenda item pertaining to CARES Act funding. If you'd like to call in, you can do so now at 629-255-1921. The number will remain displayed on the PowerPoint for the duration of the discussion of this item. And so I'm going to pass it over to Caroline. Thank you, Mattia and everyone. So um, before I get started, I did want to let you guys know that the regular Metro Arts grant funding that had been paused has been reinstated as of this week um, via a memo from Director Crumbo in the Finance Office. So we're very excited about that. And we have moved about our, you know, 55 contracts through uh, this week that we're kind of sitting in finance's office and we are now moving that many invoices to finance to be paid. So the first invoices for our grantees will um, start to be paid pretty soon. So we're very, very excited about that. And 
I uh, appreciate all the staff and pivoting and moving and, and, and dealing with all the administrative things, but I do want to let you know that those are on their way. So we'll start with um, CARES funding, which I believe I have you know updated you on previously that we've been working on this. So this is the federal funding that comes to the city and on November 5th, Metro Council voted to approve $2 million for arts and cultural nonprofits in Nashville. Uh, the resolution states that this commission should determine which nonprofits should receive these grants or awards. Um, we are partnering with Pathway Lending to distribute the funds and manage the application with, with oversight by you all. And that includes a 5% administrative fee going to Pathway. And that is really due to the timeline. So we just, there was no way we could have moved another, you know, 50 plus grant contracts through and payments through by the deadline, which is the end of December. So that's sort of the reasoning behind that. And Pathway has, you know, partnered with Metro and some of the other CARES distribution so they've um we're you know kind of in process with doing this for live music venues and a couple of other situations so that they're um you know kind of up to speed on this already so we'll go to the next slide please so in the resolution basically what we did was the um eligibility language from our current grant guidelines and copied that over except for one change that the covid um, committee or cares committee um made, which was this date that you see highlighted February 29th, 2020, a, a minimum of 12 months prior to that for being in operation. Our grant guidelines usually call for more, you know, longer period of time, um, up to three years, I believe. So this is a little bit of a different change. So we may see some additional organizations coming into the pool that we don't currently fund, which is fine. Um, we just may have, um, you know, additional organizations that we have not funded yet as Metro Arts. And everything else is pretty much the same that you would recognize in our regular granting process. We can go to the next slide. So this uh, talks about ineligibility. So this will be, you know, no arts organizations that are focused solely on capacity or technical assistance or advocacy. No friends of organizations who are, you know, is primary goal to support government agencies or other groups. Uh, no capital improvements or purchase of property. Um, this commission may establish additional criteria if you wish. Um, the, you know, so that's for discussion. And then we'll go to the next slide to look at um, what the funding actually will be. So applicants who want to apply are able to apply for funds that cover up to two months of operating expenses incurred between March and October of this year. And those cannot have previously been covered by other federal funds like PPP or idle funds or other you know, grants or things like that coming from the federal government. The awards will be capped based upon organizational budget size with the following maximum awards. So you'll see the breakout below, which is you know, larger budget sizes can request up to 87.5. The next tier is 50,000 on down 20,000, 15,000. And this is based on their pre-COVID annual budgets. So we can go to the next slide. So the application we are working on right now with our pathway lending is developing right now. So we anticipate it can open tomorrow. It might be late in the day just because we're still working through some technical details. The funding is first come first served. Um, the commission will need to review and approve the funding awards. So that means we need to come back to you with a full listing of who's applied, who's eligible, who, you know, what their amounts would be. So um, Grace will be reaching out to you probably right after this meeting uh, to ask about scheduling a meeting on maybe the 10th or the 11th, that um, second week of December. And we'll ask you to please still hold the 17th just in case we get additional applications and we need to sort of close it out at that point. We, we don't anticipate that, but you have it on your calendar already. So if you could hold the 17th, just to make sure, you know, we don't want to wait too long because we really do want to get the money out the door and, you know, the deadline is, is, is upon us um, at the end of December. And of course we have holidays in there as well. Let's see, I think I've covered all the things we will be um, working with pathway and sort of um, in tandem. So we will take questions from applicants, you know, just around eligibility and, you know, what's, what they can apply for and any anything else. Pathway will sort of handle the technical aspects of the application, the financial reviews and, and that kind of thing, but we'll be working in tandem with their staff. 
uh, to review the applications. So I think we can go. Um, the Grants and Funding Committee did review this last week and approve the criteria that we have here for this funding. And we are asking for approval to move this forward. This Thank is you. Commissioner Busey, and as the new chair of the Grants and Funding Committee, I'd like to approve the criteria for the CARES Act funding and move the motion forward. This is Bonnie. I'll second. Yay. Thank you. We Thank you guys for being very proactive, but I have a couple of things I need to read before we get to Oh, no. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, uh, were there any public comments on this motion submitted by email? There were not. Great. Are there any public comments via phone? Are there any co public comments via phone? No comments by phone. Thank you. Okay, so that is the end of the public comments for this agenda. We will no longer be taking calls regarding this subject. Um, we've already had a motion in the second. Uh, are there any further dis comments or discussion? I had a question. This is Will. Thank you, Will. So if an organization has received, let's say hypothetically, two months worth of, of uh, PPP money, um, they'd still be eligible for CARES funding under this for, for money they didn't receive uh, in addition to those two months, right? So Correct. for example, if they had four months of no income, two are covered by PPP, they could get two months under the CARES Act funding, right? Correct, yes. Okay, I just want to make sure we we're clear about that. Thank you. Now, Caroline, oh, sorry, this is Paula. Um, Caroline, how do we know if somebody has it? Like, how will you do the investigative work to make sure that they didn't already receive federal funds? So that's part of the application process. There will be some, um, you know, assertions that I, you know, we did not receive federal funding to you know, for these particular expenses, and then they've got to submit some other financial documentation showing what their expenses are because we realize, you know, expenses, monthly expenses from January of this year would not be what, you know, where people are operating right now. So um, that's all part of those um, application pieces that we're working through right now. Okay, thank you. This is a lot shorter yesterday. Somebody. Grace, you, Grace, yeah, I don't know who it is. Yeah. Hey, this is Jane. How did, have we notif did we notify our grantees about the funds being available, or how did we do that? So, yes, Emily's been working on that for the past week or so. Um, social media posts, I believe it's in our, it was in our arts alert, uh, in other communications directly, just to say, get ready. Here's what you're going to need. You know, this is come, that kind of thing. Thanks. Are there any other comments or questions on this particular motion? Okay, well, we're going to go ahead and take a um, roll call vote on this motion. Um, Commissioner, um, on the motion to approve um, the criteria for the CARES Act funding. Um, Commissioner Schmidt? Aye. Commissioner Cheek? Aye. Commissioner Alvis? Aye. Commissioner Bird? Aye. Commissioner Dow? Aye. Commissioner Busey? Aye. Commissioner Ramos? Aye. Commissioner Roberts? Aye. Commissioner Stringer? Aye. Commissioner West? Aye. Commissioner Whitney? Aye. Thank you. Uh, and I also vote aye. And the motion carries. Okay. Um, so uh, I'm going to move that we, we're moving over to project um, program and project updates. Uh, we will now, um, I'm going to pass it over to, to Sherry and Janine for some updates on the FY22 year grant guidelines and other program updates. Okay, thank you. I think, um, is Janine here? I didn't see her on the list. Well, um, Hi, Sherry, I'm here. 
Hi, Janine. Do you want to, do uh, you want me to give her a, a bit of an update or do you want to go ahead? And, yeah, go ahead and uh, yeah. sure, sure thing. Um, uh, well, we had our, um, our grants and funding committee uh, meeting last week um, with Sherry as our fearless leader, our new chair, um, and discussed uh, some of the uh, topics that are listed here. Um, the dollar for dollar uh, matching requirement, um, whether or not to continue that, um, considering uh, funding only uh, operating support um, or revising categories, uh, project categories. Um, and uh, we reviewed recommendations provided by the Committee for Anti-Racism and Equity, um, as well as uh, started our conversation on criteria and allocations and set the next meeting um, for December 3rd. Um, and uh, any other uh, details you wanted to provide, Sherry? Uh, uh, maybe a few. Um, I just wanted to say that uh, yesterday, uh, we, we had a very productive meeting. Um, on our initial meeting on November 12th and a lot of, it, it, we made, we basically agreed on a lot of things, but there were a few issues and concerns and the concerns are what's on that slide before you. Um, so I think the meeting on December 3rd is going to bear some fruit because yesterday myself, along with the staff, Janine, Grace, um, Marissa and and Ian, we had a short little powwow in preparation for the December 3rd meeting, meeting, and I feel very confident with the recommendations from the staff that that meeting on December 3rd is going to uh, bear fruit. So there's no action that needs to be taken today, obviously, but our December board commissioners meeting will have the newly amended grant guidelines for your approval. And I guess we'll just wait for the next meeting and um, we'll have those guidelines for you and just prepared to be wowed. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Great. Uh, thanks so much. And um, yeah, if we move on to the next slide, um, I can provide just some brief um, program updates for you. Great. So uh, to give you an update on our racial equity and arts leadership program. And so um, for the new commissioners, um, this is a collaboration that we have with the Curb Center at Vanderbilt. And it's um, it uses a cohort learning model uh, that engages artists, uh, arts leaders um, and administrators in teaching and lear learning opportunities about race, equity practices and ways in which um, we enact change with um, through personal practice, uh, organizational change, um, and also considering issues um, within the larger arts ecosystem. And previous participants have engaged in seminars, lunch and learns, um, and other uh, workshops and lectures. The overall goal of the program is to illuminate, interrupt, and transform conditions that perpetuate racism. Currently, we're in an evaluation and redesign year with CURB. Um, we're just sending out an alumni survey, uh, survey probably um, tomorrow, um, and then we'll, uh, we'll meet to um, create the uh, updated curriculum for the next round. Um, we just notified that um, uh, we were have been uh, recommended for funding by the uh, National Endowment for the Arts uh, for $50,000 for projects related to real. Um, and so this is in line with what we're thinking about how we continue to develop the program to expand it into a two year fellowship program. Um, that, uh, you know, will take that first year kind of similar. Um, of, structure of just learning reflection discussion and then year two uh, will uh, you know we'll put those ideas into action so it's really exciting and I hope to um, give you more details uh, in the upcoming months um, as we continue to develop the program um, all right next slide please all right great um, and uh, lots of acronyms here so um, Americans for the Arts um, as a partner, we've partnered with them. Um, uh, we partnered with them last summer on diversity and arts leadership, which is a summer internship program for undergrads um, uh, who identify as people of color. Um, and so they've recently approached us about um, providing additional um, funding to support the program um, for a virtual, uh, virtual internship program this summer. Um, we have 
been in discussion that this would be uh, there would uh, we'd like there to be a greater focus on Nashville undergrads and every, they are fine with that. And we're currently in the process of working through contract specifics again, um, updates forthcoming in the next few months. Um, next slide, please. Great, and just some other brief um, program updates from um, uh, the strategic funding and initiatives team. Um, we are uh, developing a program with the porch um, and crossroads anti racism. Um, uh, uh, organization and so Crossroads is the organization that we have partnered with on um, anti racism programs throughout the years. Many of you are, are familiar with them. Um, in the uh, we are planning on launching in February a um, a program that takes the Crossroads anti racism uh, kind of two day intensive, expanding it out into a six week writing workshop. So it'll start off with an anti racism uh, one day intensive and then um, follow uh, the next six uh, weeks will be um, uh, cohort uh, writing um, cohort writing workshops. We anticipate about um, 24 students will be involved in this. Um, it's really exciting um, and we'll update you um, with more information in the next uh, month or so once we officially launch. Um, and then the listed programs uh, are all underway. Um, at different states of development. Yeah, Thrive projects are happening as well as ABC. Uh, we're wrapping up our fall programming for restorative arts that was all virtual uh, at the uh, Juvenile Detention Center, the JDC, um, and are in talks with the Metro Action Committee on planning for opportunity now in the summer. So more um, more updates uh, coming soon, but I just wanted to give you a little, a little overview of, of things that are happening. Uh, thank you, Janine. So I think uh, I'm going to pass the meeting over to Atilio to talk about the Madison on my mind update. Thank you, Mattia. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm going to give you a cliff notes version of this presentation just because I know everybody needs to get off. So uh, slide, please. So just want to give you a quick recap. Um, this is an $85,000 uh, NEA grant um, and we put it towards Madison on my mind. We have 20 local artists that were funded in this project right now. They're in uh, uh, creative uh, projects right now with uh, our lead artist, uh, Kristen Chapman Gibbons. Um, however, the more important thing that I wanted to bring up to you is that we decided to do an outdoor event and we decided to partner with 54 Community Center. 54 uh, focuses on working with seniors in the community. After speaking with them, we mutually agreed we could do a grander version of a event they have on a monthly basis called a deep and great. This is a socially distance event. Um, the model of the event is that they have a path where their patrons could drive through and stop by each individual booth where they have music or uh, meal pickup and also the staff members of 50 forward. So we just decided to scale it up a bit and we have now decided to create Madison on my mind a showcase, which will be held on December 12th, 2020 at 54 parking lots. It would be from three uh, from 12 to 3 p.m. And we hope you all could be able to just join us. Uh, next slide, please. We do have um, 15 totals artists participating. Seven of the artists are going to be performing artists, so we will have a stage. Eight of them um, will have an exhibition booth, um, which range from painters, puppeteers, fashion designers. Um, and as I mentioned, this will be a socially distance event, so we hope you all could join us um, and, you know, for at least an hour or two and just drive by. Next slide, please. Here's just a couple examples of the artists that will be featured. This is Kayla Jenkins, uh, Continuity to Chaos. She actually finished her piece already. Uh, this piece takes inspiration from the Madison Roadway and uh, shows and depicts historical imagery. Um, we are looking also at uh, donation opportunities in the future for some of these pieces that have been produced and finding a home within Madison, hopefully. Next slide, please. Next is a department favorite. This is the Farmer and Adele. They are a children's educational show. Um, they have an emphasis on nutrition um, and also 
mathematics and also spelling um, through sing song. Um, with our support, uh, they are adding puppets to their production. So uh, here are two of the puppets. Uh, and just so you know, their puppets are inspired by historical artists um, that come from Madison or have had some sort of experience with Madison. Um, Elvis Parsley is one of them. Another one is Hank Snowpea and Johnny Cash Crop. Next slide, please. This is another one that's very adorable. Uh, Rhythm and Review Dance Theater. Uh, this is one of the very few uh, family-owned, Black-owned businesses in the Rivergate area. They have become a center for the youth there. Um, they have been impacted, obviously, through COVID. So they approached us, um, and we definitely brought them on board. And so we cannot wait for them to uh, give us a performance uh, at the event. Um, but for their overall performance, they will have an inspirational video uh, inspired by their community. And then aside from that, uh, next slide, I think it's it. Um, we hope you all could join us on December 12th. It's gonna be from 12 to 3 p.m. at uh, 54 Madison Station next to Amqui Station. Thank you. Thank you so much for that update. Um, we really appreciate it. Are there any questions um, that commissioners have for any of uh, our uh, speakers that gave a presentation in the program and project updates portion? Okay. Well, if there are no questions or comments about any of those uh, of the items in the programs and project updates, then I believe that this completes the business of this meeting. Uh, and I believe that we are ready to adjourn. So I'm going to call that the meeting is adjourned. I really appreciate everybody's time um, for this meeting today. We had a lot of business to conduct and we got it all done. And I think in record time. So I uh, appreciate all the work that you guys have done. I think that's all. Carolyn, is there anything else? No, thank you, Mattia, for stepping in and, and thank you to all the commissioners and thank you to the staff. As you can see, there's so much going on and we just really appreciate your support and all the work that's happening. So have a happy Thanksgiving next week. Happy Thanksgiving, Carolyn. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Have a safe holiday, everyone. Thanksgiving. Happy holidays.